What's going on everybody, my name is Aiden and welcome back to another video and ladies and gentlemen, I have a story to tell you. Once upon a time, the Chicago Bulls ended up performing a miraculous comeback against the Memphis Grizzlies. It was such a fantastic game that brought all joy to the Chicago Bulls fans' hearts. And we couldn't do it, we would possibly see it again anytime soon. And then one day the Orlando Magic show up, eager and ready to go, but with a little bit of magic... Get it? I get it. Do you get it? We ended up completing another comeback, ladies and gentlemen. It's the sweet smell of a comeback victory. And we ended up getting another win, this time at home, and being plus 500 for the first time in over two years. That's pretty incredible. I mean, I think it's about two years. Maybe it's a little bit over a year, whatever. But anyway, it's a long time since we've become plus 500. And I am very excited about that, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, it is still early in the season. We are only five games in, but it's five games to be really proud of, or at least three of them to be really proud of. The Bulls beat the Orlando Magic 102 to 99, and we're going to discuss it in this video. Before we get any further, if you enjoyed the video, you like to see more from me, feel free to drop a like, follow, and also subscribe if you are new and let me know in the comments below your thoughts about the Chicago Bulls and their game today and who is your player of the game overall as I mentioned we won the game 102 to 99 now look I'm gonna say this first and foremost before we get into the good stuff I don't want to make a habit out of comeback victories now as much as it is a great feeling I don't want to be down 20 points every single game because eventually you are not going to win those games it's unsustainable that's what I'm trying to say now, of course, when we get them, fantastic. Clap, be proud, be happy, live life to the fullest. But I think the next thing for the Bulls to do is to find a way to take control of a game earlier and not let it go. But I have to credit, once again, the mental fortitude of this Bulls team to be able to not give up in such dire circumstances and to come back and to will their way into the fight. This is a young team with that type of mentality. That means, in my eyes at least, it can only go up from here. And what's so beautiful about this team, and look, this is where I'm going to give credit to players that are no longer here, guys like Caruso and guys like DeRozan, um, you know, nurturing these young guys to become really good players when we, when we need them the most. Guys that are comfortable in very, uh, I guess, close games. We had some of the closest games last season that it seems like we're doing just fine because of that this season as well. We're just in those situations. We've been there before, so we're able to execute in those dire stretches. Now, keep in mind, the fourth quarter was an absolute joke from both teams. I think it was like, what, 0 from 24 or something like that before any team made a field goal? It was a disaster. But ultimately, we still won the game, and we still performed where we needed to perform. Guys like Patrick Williams came in and had a fantastic second half and hit the big three that sent Orlando home. Josh Giddy, unbelievable for the Chicago Bulls. Zach Levine came into it just a little bit. Vucevic with another strong game. Kobe White was really, really good as well. Our bench wasn't too shabby. I think we tied the bench points with the Orlando Magic. Io was really, really solid. So again, it was a really nice performance overall. Was it a beautiful game to watch? No. I think... You have to expect that when you face Orlando. Orlando is one of the best teams in the NBA defensively. Um, and they've always been like that from last season. They, they are continuing to do that this season. They wear you down. They tie you out. They make you take dumb shots. They make you look silly offensively sometimes. But the weakness on their side is that sometimes they do the same thing in their own right. They don't have the best offense. And they don't necessarily really shine to the occasion. And you saw the collapse of the Orlando Magic in the second half. Where field goal wise, they were just absolutely horrible to watch. And yeah, they let themselves down there. They probably could have ended up walking away with a win if they just stayed consistent on the offensive end but the Bulls willed their way into the game they started to make some shots things started to click we did really really well in transition once more we did really well with the three ball knocking them down a little bit in the second half and things started to flow and things started to happen but you don't get anywhere without the belief and that is something I'm more proud of anything to say that this team does have at the moment. A belief system that no matter what situation they are put in front of, they will be able to knock it out of the park. I just hope now, in the next game, let's control the game. Let's actually possess the victory or possess the lead in the first half. And let's carry it over. Let's try to work in the first half. Because playing four quarters of basketball is going to be a very important thing for the rest of the season. And missing the first half, being down by 20 points and coming back, as nice as it is, as I mentioned, it's not that consistent. 
I also want to give credit to the Bulls' defense. Um, because I don't give enough credit to the Bulls' defense, and I still think there's some really, really bad areas of the Bulls' defense, mainly in transition. I will stay firm to the fact that I believe the Bulls transitionally do not play great defense, and maybe it's just because it's almost impossible to do. I don't know, but it just feels like we could do better transition defense-wise. Some guys don't get back, I guess, as quickly as they probably can. But when you get great rebounding as well, I mean, we were so good rebounding-wise. Giddy, Vucevic, even the guards, you know, I mean, Giddy is a guard. But anyway, like, all, all the guards as well coming in and fighting for rebounds. Uh, uh, what a great team effort on the glass. And uh, it's, when you do stuff like that, it limits the opponent's chances to get, I guess, offensive rebounds and, and or even defensive rebounds and hit you in transition. It limits those things, which is always an incredible sight to see. But I still think we need to work on it. Uh, but everywhere else, the half-court offense, uh, the half-court defense, I should say, I thought was pretty good. Uh, players were giving 100% effort. Uh, it looked like the rotations were on point, at least in the second half. Things were moving on the defensive end just as much as they were on the offensive end. And you don't stop a team and hold them to under 100 points if you didn't play any sort of defense whatsoever. And the stats are starting to really favor the Bulls defensively as well. So... I can't complain, man. Things are really starting to roll together with this Bulls team. Congratulations. Uh, but yeah, ultimately, I'm still very impressed. I want to quickly take a look at some stats for the Chicago Bulls before we kick into the player of the game and everything in between. So let's take a look. Player stats over here. I was firstly, I want to give a big shout out to Josh Giddy. I kind of already mentioned it earlier, but what makes me so happy for Josh Giddy is that so many people doubted him already. So many people didn't necessarily see what he could bring to a Chicago Bulls team. Or so many people are using personal, I guess, a personal situation. Let's put it that way. That, you know, I don't think any of us are going to truly know uh, the, uh, the outcome of, I guess, 100%. They tried to use all that stuff against Josh Giddy, where he's coming out here and he's balling. Let's take a look at his stats. 20 points, 11 rebounds, and 5 assists, cracking into the double-double range, ladies and gentlemen. A 20-10 and 10 game from a guy that is known as a guard, maybe a forward from time to time, and he was very impressive in this game. And in my opinion, he's in contention for player of the game. But Kobe White, with 21 points, coming alive in the game as well. Zach Levine had 11 and 10. The reason why I'm giving Zach Levine praise is that even though he didn't have the most amazing scoring night, I think he did okay in the fourth quarter, but... He was getting active in other ways. He was getting active with the assist. I think he had four turnovers as well, so that's an active part you don't want to see. But, you know, 11 and 10 from Zach Levine on an off night. He always has off nights against Orlando, but that's, in my opinion, a good way to keep yourself active. Patrick Williams, great second half. 10 points and 7 rebounds. Uh, again, made some big shots. Two big threes in the third quarter. Probably the biggest three of the game in the fourth quarter. I can't complain about Patrick Williams, nor will I. Uh, Vucevic, of course, we had the 18 and 14. Didn't make a three in this game. Was pretty solid overall. Again, super consistent this season has Nikola Vucevic been. Iowa 12, impressive, man. It's just an impressive all-around game where we had to grind our gears for the win. And we did so. So it's good to see that we're also winning in different ways. I mentioned it in the OKC Thunder game that... The Bulls need to find multiple ways to beat a team. It doesn't have to be just three-point shooting, and it doesn't ha just have to be in transition. It has to be in multiple ways. I would say our defense won us that game, and that is a way that we won, and that is a different way that we ended up winning a game. So let's see what happens against the Nets, if we can win the game, and how we can win the game. If Again, we'll just wait and see. It brings excitement to the Chicago Bulls fan base at this point in time. Okay, enough of the jibber-jabber. Let's go to the player of the game and the must-improve. I... The must-improve is rather difficult. Just because I think, in many ways, this Bulls team struggled. I think everybody did in some way, form, or fashion. But when you get comeback wins like that, it's hard. It's, it's really, really hard to give a must-improve. So I might skip that one, in all honesty. But... My player of the game is pretty simple. It is Josh Giddy. I haven't given him one this season. And I think he's been one of the biggest game changers that has happened to this Bulls team. But today, it's hard to ignore a 20 and 10 game. Big on the plus minus as well. Just change the game for the Bulls today. He is my player of the game. What do you guys think? 3 and 2, plus 500. Can't complain. We'll see what happens against the Nets. But thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay tuned for more. Take care. And peace.